history. It's a knockout we'll be talking about when the year is up, when we're going over the knockouts of the year. I suspect we'll talk about this card as the crowd of the year, this event as the event of the year. We'll talk about uh, uh, Shor and, 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 and Valiev as, as one of the rounds of the year, and we will 1,000% talk about Molly McCann's big knockout, her first in the UFC against Luana Carolina. Without further ado, let us say hello to everyone's favorite MMA fighter now. There she is, Molly McCann. Molly, are you alive? Are, are you in the clouds? Can you even describe what is going on in your life right now? My little toes, Ariel. My throat, my voice is still cage side with Dana when uh, Pad, Paddy fought. But um, I got home last night and I slept for about 14 hours. I was so tired. Um, it's been a big, 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 big long fight camp. Um, and with the, the documentary coming out and it was just a massive, massive, massive night. But one that we knew was finally coming. I think I said to you, didn't I, Ariel, that I think it's time to get the finish now when it came. Is it fair to say Saturday of your career, but maybe even of your life, greatest night? Yeah. Um, my mum and my dad's wedding, that, that was, that's up there. And that moment for me, I was saying to to the media team and everyone like I may never get that again you know I still may never you could you could never might never get a a, um, a knockout like that again I don't think women or men don't really get them but oh Ariel I can't even I don't even know I'm just I'm floating I'm so at peace I'm so at peace because this is the moment I've been waiting for and I've battled with my own mind and I've battled against everything and everyone could just see how calm I was this week and it, or last week and it was just time. It was just my time. Yeah, you had this amazing confidence. Uh, as you said, you were calm. I was wondering if that was for, for us, for the media, for the, or was it true that everything was coming together for you? This and this was at one. So... Um, it's just like I said, it just felt like like a Cage Warriors event and and I'd always struggled with feeling like a fan and um, Big Paul just said the same, sometimes you don't feel like you should be there and um, I, I was saying I am, a, I am a, a UFC vet now and when I walked into the Cage aerial, I realised what, like I've arrived, like for the fans, like I was getting the, the best walk out of the night up until well, I think Paddy probably got the best, but I definitely reckon mine was up there. Yes. But maybe the second best. And when I walked in and I looked at her face when everyone was cheering, I looked into the crowd and I see Anthony Joshua there, Eddie Hayne, all like American celebrities were saying, I was just like, go and do the business, people. All you've ever asked for is this moment, so go and seize it. What a scene and what a start to the fight. I thought you were going to finish her in the first couple of minutes. What What is going on in your mind when this is happening? You're probably thinking, this is my chance, right? I ran after it, literally, when, it, when I kept hitting her, hitting her, hitting her, and she still ran away. I kept on chasing her still and running after, but um, I thought I was Neo out of the Matrix. I was like... But... Nothing was going to stop me, Ariel. I say this a lot, a crowd and me ball Molly. It was a match made in heaven. And to do it, I said I'd not lose in front of me mum. I'd not lose in front of me mum again. I won't do it. So me mum was there. Everyone was there. And um, I just, I knew I was ready to give my everything for that fight. And someone, like I've watched it back and the lads was like, um, I think she might be gassed a little bit or whatever. I knew in the second round, I compose yourself for the last. If you can't knock her out in the second, go classic meatball and destroy it. And I even got a few classy takedowns, proper Matthews back, <laughs> like bomb. Oh my God, that was amazing. <laughs> Give one then to the crowd on the way down. And I'm a bomb performer, really, Ariel. So. So, so to confirm, you did not 
gas out. You, you, because I was worried about that as well. You just threw everything at her. I was wondering if there would be a bit of a drop off. Didn't happen. No, I was taken. I was told in the changing rooms, and this is on record, so you'd be able to see Paul Rimmer, my coach, and Joseph McNally, the boxing coach. Don't give it any respect. Go and put it on for the first round and then feel the rest of it out because when I do that and I impose my will and she's dancing to my song or the beat of my drum, I always win the fights and win them well. Um, so I just thought, right, come on then. And then I knew in the last round she was going to come for me, Ariel. So I just thought, right, give her the first minute and then people tend to like, to gas after that you know like when they they have to chase the fight they get a good strong minute and then they walk on to something and I have a really good counter left hook and I've or a backhand I thought you'd walk on to one of them but you could see and you, you'll know in a lot of my fights I've gone for them spinning elbows and I throw it normally a different way it would be like a 6 to 12 but this one it was like a 9 to 3 and um, put it a key put, put here Sent it to the shadow realms, as um, our Patrick said. Can you even put into words what it feels like to connect with something like that and then see her just go limp? Like, how can you even describe that? Well, did you see my face? <laughs> did you see? I went, Whoa. <laughs> um, It's something that when you chase a submission or you chase a finish, they don't come. When you're loose and you're sharp, they come. And when I'm not tense, like I've only knocked one person down, I think, in the UFC, and that was Ariane Lipsky. But when I'd done that, it was like a sharp backhand and I didn't load up. And that elbow, I just looked to the side, Ariel, and I just give a glance up and I just thought, is it on? Is it on? Just keep edging. Yeah, look, go, boom. And just there was no, there was no pause or tense. It was just going I didn't put any power into it it was just 100% commit commit to it and um, I'm never ever going to stop thinking about that moment where the referee had to push me out the way I I wasn't going to go back in because I could see she was out but like you pray for them moments like um, a Mark Hunt step over like that kind of like that you pray for them and for what really blew me away Ariel was when um Dana said, I don't think you will ever see a better knockout from a female ever again. Or like that doesn't happen. Them yeah. kinds of finishes don't happen. But I think I just took that much out of a gas tank. Like the body shots, the non-stop pressure, the pressure of the occasion. I think she will have been mentally drained before getting in there because, listen, every single person was screaming for me when I got in there. And it must have been really intimidating. Did um you know they didn't show it obviously they don't usually in these situations did it take her a while to get up and were you cognizant of that and did that uh at all like you know it's it's it could be scary right we saw it with Mick Conlon a couple of weeks ago right it could be scary when the opponent is out so this is going to sound mad but I didn't know she was still down because of the elation yeah that I had won and I'd finally got the finish and when I got back in. It was only then when I went over to pay, like, it sounded like she died, paid me respect, but make sure she was okay. And then she still hadn't come round. And so much was going on. I didn't really, I didn't think I could hurt someone. So I didn't worry about it. I, I thought, I'm only, I was 57 kilo. I'm 125 pounds. I'm not really going to hurt someone mm-hmm. um, like that. So I, I knew she'd be up. Um, I didn't think it was that much of a bad knockout until I seen the replays. It was only when I got into the background, when Mike Bisbon, I think he said something and I looked at it and I was like, I, the best bit for me, Ariel, I was going, I'm going to be on the CSI song. Like when the UFC uh-huh. starts the main card, yeah. I'm going to be on the UFC CSI song. I love that you called the CSI. It, the you mean Bob O'Reilly, right? Yeah, what is it? Teenage something. Teenage Wasteland. What is it called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. just call it CSI song. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> you are going to be on it. I mean, that will be talked about forever. Yeah. You might win Knockout of the Year, yeah. Molly. You might win Knockout of the Year. Well, do you know what? 
it's about damn time. It is about damn time. <laughs> been, oh yeah, I've been to, I've been committed to the game. You know how much I give to it. And um, I feel as if MMA, that, that fight that night, gave me back everything that I've put into it. And in one second, I've possibly changed my life forever. Do you hear that? Hey, Frank, there's like crazy music in my ear. Do you hear this or no? Yes, in one second. Do you want me to take my headphones off? No. I Frank, you hear this? I don't know what's going on. One second. There's like crazy music coming through my headphones. Do you hear that, Molly? Is it gone now? No. Frank? I'll take my headphones off anyway. Of no, I think it's on our end. Guys, can someone talk to me? You, anyone hear me? Yeah. Can, you, can you hear me, Molly? Yeah, I can't hear any noise. Okay, though. cool. There was crazy like uh, club music coming through my headphones. Static. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, that threw me off a little bit. Do you feel like there is a, a, a weight lifted off your shoulders now that that is gone? Now you don't have to worry about that ever again. Yeah, I feel like I'm back to who I was pre Gillian Robertson. So that's a really nice place to be. That, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I've been struggling with demons ever since that. And and you've had wins ever since, since that. that why why does this why is this the one that gets you back to that point? Fulfillment, I've done what I'm bulletproof in here now. Um and I wasn't until the Kim fight in September, but this really solidified like now I am the business and when I believe I am, you get them kinds of um, performances and if I'm someone who can give a emotional performance every single time and when you get the good emotion out of me, you get world-class performances. It just takes time to get that and to get it right and I feel the stars have aligned for me and I feel, I think I said to you in the last interview, I feel like I'm coming into my prime mm. and I'm starting to get there. And um, the press have said a lot of stuff and the media have said a lot of stuff about me going for the belt, this, that, and But I just know normally I would be on drinking a lot more alcohol and eating a lot more shit food, but not now, Ariel. I'm, I will always be training and I won't be taking time off. And I'm really, really focused on about coming up for that belt and... I'm not going to be calling Shevchenko out, but if Talia Santos doesn't, he gets an injury or anything like that in, in June, I'm over here. <laughs> you think you're ready for it? Like you feel in your heart confidence that you would be up for that challenge, even if it's a late notice thing? I feel like anyone in the division should. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if, if you wouldn't jump at the opportunity, then what are you doing? I, want to, I would love to be like Mike Bisbon. Mm, that would be incredible. Uh, by the way, the people that you ran to outside of the cage, did you know who they were, the ones who gave you the belt and all that? No, I literally didn't know what to do. I was just overwhelmed. And I just thought, where is Dana White? And then when I spoke to Dana, this guy, one person had the pint of beer and one person had the belt. And instead of going for the beer, which would be my thing, I, I got the belt by... Uh, well, it wasn't really by accident, but I didn't plan on doing that. It just happened. And then I kind of, someone got a really good picture of me in the belt in the cage. And I thought, I'll print that out and I'll look at that every day. Mm. And someone said, now you'll know what it'll feel like if you ever won the belt. Because I imagine it was the same kind of mm. joy. And um, yeah, I've got a real belief. And self-belief is a... Is a powerful, powerful thing. So I'm there buzzing. Speaking of pictures, that one that I know you saw, you posted it where you're almost literally upside down. That You you got to print that one out too, right? I mean, that is just incredible. Yeah, I got a few. Someone, a few people have like sent me pictures already. Oh, that is from, wow, already you got that? That's from less than two days ago. Yeah, and you'll love this one, Ariel. Wow, yeah, that is the one. Yeah, that is incredible. Yes, that is incredible. So, yeah, me and Patrick just taken over the world. And <laughs> um, that picture, like, yeah, 
amazing. I, I, I've had enough of li- listening to myself speak, seeing myself on Instagram and Twitter. Um, yeah, I think I was saying to Paddy, I was like, lad, I can't wait to stop having to speak on the telly because I feel like yeah. everyone has just heard enough of me and him, but apparently the world want more. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and, and and with that, I, I apologize for bothering you, but, you know, we had to have you on after this. Oh, behave. Uh, I told you, didn't I? I, um, I put a tweet out today saying to Eddie Hearn, please may have tickets to come and watch Katie. I'm going to book flights. And he oh, yes. said, after that performance, it's on me. Uh, I was like, cool. So I really will. I'll come and see you that week. I'm going to go to the Tyson Fury fight and then I'll fly to New York on the Sunday and I'll come on the show on Monday. Amazing. Um, did you talk to Eddie in person there? What was that like? Yeah, me. I'm sat with him and Auntie Joshua. Oh, look at you. Just hobnobbing it up. Like this. Like that. What do they say? Like, isn't that surreal stuff for you? Yeah. I had uh, done a bit of punditry work for the zone. So the right. first time I met him, okay. I was like, wow. And now I just feel like he's my friend. Yeah. Ain't no thing. Um, and then, it, so you, you like the, the thing of booking you and Patty side by side makes it all the more special, right? Because you go to the back and then you come right out to watch his fight and then his fight is perfect. Like it, it almost, I feel like your fight, your win, everything is great, but just to have him and the journey that you two have been on to do it again like this makes it all the more special, right? Like you couldn't even script So it. much more special. Um, we just aligned, me and him, we're so, so different, but so the same. And I think it's a bit refreshing to the MMA community or maybe like just we're just us you know and we're not doing this fake persona and we're not we're just literally two kids from Liverpool who want to who want to put put on for the fans for our city and just make everyone proud and try and make everyone some money on the way and um, and when we train as hard as we do it's inspiring. I walked in the gym today, Ariel, mm. and one lad in the gym showed me his phone and that picture that you've just put on, that was the background on his phone and I was like, that's a training partner of mine. Like, that's just blown my mind and walking through the city today, I went and picked Frank, my dog, up from me nan because she looked after him for me and the city is just so proud. Every single person Every single person who's realised looked at me in the eyes has wished me good luck. And I put a tweet on saying, I can't believe the city that I'm so proud of is as proud of me as I am of yeah. it, if you know what I mean. And I was just, I can't believe it, really. Is there is there any talks of, I mean, they got to put a show back at the Echo Arena, right? Now with you, and this would be a no And now I, I just think... Dana knows what he's got with me and Patrick and we've also still got Darren. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Tom and um, and Grundy. So, I mean, I feel like we could do <laughs> Merseyside or Liverpool versus the Wales in the Echo Arena again and I would like to right the wrong that happened in the Echo. Do you know what I mean? Like, mine and Paddy's last fight in the Echo we both lost. So it would be nice to come back and get a win there, but um, we'll fight anyway. I've, but I kind of said to Dana, and I was like, I don't really want to not fight in England now. <laughs> so now, like, the American tax is rough. But, um, yeah, because we get double tax, but um, fighting here, I think there's no place like home. I know this might be a tough question for you to answer, but why do you think people love you so much? Maybe just because I'm normal. I don't know. I don't know. I suppose I'm a bit funny. People tend to laugh. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I work hard and I'm an underdog, I suppose. And maybe people like that. Mm-hmm. Or they feel sorry for me because I support a shit football team. No, come on. I mean, it was tough yesterday, but uh, as long, are, are they going to get relegated? What's going on here? Oh, 
I'm going to have to go and do a team talk. I've just put a tweet out saying, Everton, can I come and speak to the players? Yeah, you need to. My my uh, my daughter didn't love the fact that I said Everton. She likes that your name sounds like meatballs in a can. Yeah, I love that video <laughs> that you put on. Like, it really was touching. Uh, yes, uh, I love doing those things with her. Okay, so uh, before I let you go, Valentina... If there's an opening, we're down. Is there anyone else? If it's not that, if Tyla makes it, what are you thinking? How soon we see you back and anyone come to mind? Whenever the boss says, would you like to fight again? I'd probably say yeah. Um, I'd like to fight anyone here. But not really. I feel like now people are going to ask for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm never one to ask for anyone because... I mean, you see, they probably give me another Brazilian, oh. to be honest, because yeah. they just love that. <laughs> but um, in order to become the best, you have to beat the best. So I, I, our division is that good. I literally said post-fight, I respect every single woman in the 125-pound division. And my performances are just getting better. So I'm not really scared. There's not a style I'm cut, like apprehensive of. Um, I was told online, Ariel, that my opponents had a more diverse skill set and I was going to get submitted. Like, a lot of people put that online. I shut the jiu-jitsu down, out-wrestled here and beat someone with a better range with an elbow. It's like people just need to put a bit of respect on me. That's right. I think. It's about damn time. I agree with I feel you. like Usman. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> yes, yes, you deserve that. And and uh, and now the sponsors are rolling in, right? And I saw your post. Leave you alone. Gr- Graham Boylan's going to give me a phone call after this, and um, I think he's going to make me day. Yes, he's got everything lined up for you. I haven't. I haven't spoke. I I personally put out like I'm a soft touch, so I'd say yes to yes. a free hug. Do you know what I mean? So. He said, no, 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 no. You don't even respond to messages anymore, no, Mom. I said, okay. And I love... So he... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, he just says, um, I'll do it all now. I said, okay. So I just put that post online just so people know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not being rude or anything, but let me fight and talk and then Graham will sort business and money. That's the way it should be. You're a big shot now. You're a superstar. Uh, and I love seeing you in- I'm not a big shot. You are a big shot. You are a big shot. Everyone, Marluz Kunin is interviewing you, Molly. She's interviewing you. Women's MMA legend. Listen, when she spoke to me, I was going like this. <laughs> I was going, Mar- Marlo. So I was like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Oh, like- when I first started watching MMA, she was someone who I looked a lot towards because of the striking style and I just thought, you're sick. And then she was offered to interview Dane and she said, I know I want to interview Molly. Wow. I want to interview Molly. Wow. That gives me chills. So can you imagine how I felt? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing I talk about on this show all the time. We need to remember, and I appreciate your appreciation of her, Marlou's Kuhn, and these people who were there before there were sold out arenas at the O2, before people like, these are the legends. There aren't, you know, you and, 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 and Val, like all these people, all these women's MMA, women MMA stars without the Marlous Coonins of the world and the Roxanne Modafferi's of the world. Like we need to start remembering yeah. and appreciating these people. So I thought it was awesome that I wasn't sure. I don't know. Like, I was like, does, does Molly know that that's Marlous Coonin? But you've confirmed. Okay. Yeah. I think you, when it says real recognizes real. There it is. And you can just see, and I was, when she was interviewing me, Ariel, I was like, can we just stop on second? I just watch Paddy weigh in. And she was like, yeah. So that's the pictures when we're looking up at the uh, screen. That's okay. what we was doing. Amazing. Well, I am so happy for you. Uh, congratulations. I, 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 w- I would like to give you a hug in, uh, in celebration of this moment. You deserve it. You've been through it all. And, uh, you know, to answer the question that I asked you, I think the reason why people love you so much is because you you wear your emotion on your sleeve. You're not afraid to let us in 
on the good and the bad times. And then people get emotionally invested in your journey. And so then when you're happy and you succeed and they see that it's genuine and that you're a great person, they're happy and they feel like they've succeeded as well. You give people, regular people, ordinary people hope. Like when they see, I was watching the BT sport thing and you're running and you, you know, you know this, like you don't look like uh, an Olympic athlete when you're, you look like me running. You look like a regular person. And so we see ourselves in you and you give everyone hope, all the regular people. And you're doing now superhuman things that we can never do, but you let us think that, hey, it's possible if you work hard like you work hard. Well, so. if I can, then you can because I start like Portal before I started when I was 23, 24. Do you know what I mean? Like this all, who was it, Frankie Edgar? All it is is hard work. That is all it is, is mm-hmm. hard work. So to everyone watching, eh, especially to yourself and all the team on the show, Thanks for always letting me on. Um, thanks to everyone who supported me and said really, really nice things. And to all the nasty people, I actually do not care. Good. One thing that you say, <laughs> it does like, so you now when you, when people try and like throw shade, like, F them. I do not give a flying feck. <laughs> Amen. I'll see you in April. Go on then, boss. All thanks, right. Kang. Take care. There Bye. she is, Molly McCann. What a legend. What a performance. What a knockout.